The most coveted character in books, in movies, across all genres of literature that we embrace is the hero, but not just any type of hero, it's the reluctant hero. It is why Peter Parker, Spider-Man, is one of the most favorite superheroes in history because he's a normal person. In fact, he's downright nerdy, right? He's not anything special. We can relate to somebody who's not special but ends up being the hero. We love hero stories because we want to be our own hero. We're looking for something to save us, particularly ourselves. Can we rise to that level of greatness? In my book, The Happiness Formula, I have a chapter called You Too Have Superpowers. And I explain the people who, have the, the, who are the healthiest, the wealthiest, the most successful, relationally, spiritually, people who have the highest level of happiness quotient the people who are able to harness the power of their intellectual quotient, what they study, what they learn, information that's available, the data they collect, are able to harness the power of their emotions, their emotional quotient, so they are able to respond to situations appropriate to the moment rather than have a reaction based on how they feel in the moment. So people who can bring in their intellectual quotient and at a high level, again, they do the work involved to get data information, facts, stats. People who learn what it takes to harness the power of their emotions. And the people who adhere to a God system that participate in a spiritual process uh, with the communities of people and sacred texts. This is the happiness formula. IQ plus EQ plus GQ equals HQ. People who have the highest level of happiness, the highest level of health, wealth, success, they have understand this formula, they bring it all together, but an underlying principle in truth about all of this is there is an emotional, spiritual quality that they are the most gifted at, and that is the power of self-control. Those of you who know the word of Adonai know that there is something called fruits of the spirit. You will know my children, you will know my disciples by the fruits, what they put out into the world. One of those fruits, the ways that we can possibly know we are a disciple of Adonai Eloheinu Yeshua HaMashiach is how much self-control do we have? Do we display the attribute, the fruit of self-control. Because when you look at people of the highest level of health, wealth, success, and happiness, they are able to control themselves in any area of their life, their lusts, their desires. They are able to control themselves financially. They are able to control themselves physically. They are able to control themselves emotionally in their careers relationally with their spouses and their children and their brothers, sisters, mothers, bosses, friends. The ability to first pause and consider what might be a better outcome. When you look at a critical scripture in the Lord's Word, in the Tanakh, in one of the foundational chapters of the Lord's Word, Genesis 4, Genesis 1 through 4 is if you understand it in its Hebrew context, if you understand what the Lord is saying in Genesis 1 through 4, you will then also understand why the rest of the Lord's word called the Bible is commentary about this Genesis 1 through 4. And in Genesis 4, 7, the Lord is speaking to Cain because Cain is contemplating murdering, doing away with getting this man, his brother, out of his life because his brother is frustrating his plans and his desires. And the Lord says, Adonai says to Cain, why are you angry? Why so downcast? If you are doing what is good, shouldn't you hold your head high? And if you don't do what is good, sin is crouching at your door. It wants you, but you can rule over it. When you begin to break these words down, you begin to understand what the Lord is saying to us about self-control and how important it is. We have a choice to make. Adonai, the Lord God asked Cain, why are you so, why are you burning? Hara. Cain, hara. 
Why are you burning? Why are you getting yourself so in such vexation? You are building yourself up. You are rolling this idea over in your head and you're getting more and more and more convinced that you need to get rid of this brother of yours. Why are you doing this? You are working yourself up. Don't you know that if you choose the right actions, good, yatab, what is pleasing, behaviors, actions that go well for you, behaviors, actions that cause rejoicing, behaviors and actions that are right and beautiful. That's what good, yatab, means. If you, cho if you choose to do good, then, then you can hold your head high, be esteemed, be exalted. But if you don't do, if you don't execute upon that which is pleasing and good and right and beautiful and causes rejoicing, behaviors that lead to that, then sin, kata'a, sin, kata'a, missing the mark of God's perfection. Anything that misses the mark of God's perfection, that which is outside of the mark of perfection, this not God's perfection. Sin is crouching, crouching rabats. It is crouching at your door. Crouching implies as if it's ready to pounce. But wildly enough, it's lying down. It's reclining. It is waiting patiently. This animal of sin is waiting patiently, watching you, observing you. And the reason it can watch and observe you is because the, the evil, which is waiting patient for you, is at your door. The door is pethach. It is an opening. So it sees. It can see right in, just as well as you can see right out. So there's no wall protecting you. And the reason why sin is there waiting for you and watching you, observing you diligently, temptation, the snake, the scepter, the deceiver, tempted, waited patiently, observed diligently to, turn, to be tempted. The tempter means to observe diligently. So sin is reclining. It is lying down, stretched out, waiting for you to step out that door, the boundary of the Lord, the choices. The Lord has put boundaries. And if you walk outside the boundaries of the Lord, the mark of his perfection, if you walk outside that, sin is waiting for you. It tushuka. It wants you to shuka. It desires you. The word desire isn't like I'm super hungry and I want to eat. Um, it's a desire that's that's visceral and internal. I believe that I will get my ultimate fulfillment if I have that. It's a lust. It's a it's an unstoppable, it is an unquenchable desire. I believe that if I have that teshuka, what I, my deepest of needs to be satisfied, sin is crouching at your door and sin does desire me, Cassandra. It desires you, the person. It wants to have you walk outside God's boundaries so that you miss, you walk outside the mark and you enter into the territory of sin where the then, because it tushukas you, it wants to then devour you. But you, the Lord is saying to Cain, you, I have made you able to control, to rule over it. The word is mashal. I have made you able, gifted you the ability to rule over that which is attempting to devour you, that which is attempting to consume you. I have given you the ability of self-control. You can choose to not walk in that direction. One of the things I mentioned in my book here too in the chapter on the superpower is the 1970s study that was done at Stanford, my university. I wasn't in the study but they did a study called the marshmallow experiment. I tell people all the time, go research the marshmallow experiment. It's a fun experiment to look at, but it's a powerful foundational truth. That's what I'm talking about. It's about self-control. The ability, the students, the young people who exhibited self-control at an early age had higher SAT scores, higher degree attainment, 
higher economic attainment. They had lower body mass indices. They were healthier, wealthier. They had longer, more joy-filled marriages. On every metric of success, the children, the three, four, five, six-year-olds who demonstrated self-control at an early age attained greater levels of success, peace, joy, happiness later in life. The good news is, we can, you can learn this, you can develop self-control, but if you weren't naturally, if you weren't one of those kids that had self-control and many of you, those of you who rebelled against everything and uh, went opposite everything, uh, who, who indulged yourself in everything you wanted, you know who you are. I hope, I pray you have a sense of who you are. You can develop it. If, if, uh, if you have no control around your eating, you can develop it. If you have no control around your drinking and drug usage, you can develop it. If you have no control around what comes out of your mouth in terms of the profane things you say to other human beings, you can work on that. You can work on all of these areas of your life, but it takes time. But it's a fruit of the Spirit, which means it takes the Spirit. The Lord says, you can hold your head high. You can master, have dominion, exercise control over these things which see, that want to devour and control you. Hence, those of you who believe that you're forever stuck in the world of ADHD and depression and anxiety and drug addiction and something outside yourself is controlling you, that is not true. You have the ability, the God-given ability to exercise control over that. If you are doing everything in your power, indeed it might involve some level of medical help. It might involve some level of counseling and group help. That's been part of my reality. It's involved all of that. But it absolutely involved the hard work on my part to make sure that I was walking in the truth, what the truth of the data and the facts are. I was looking and examining myself and my behaviors and my attitudes and my actions. And I was digging into the God of my choosing to know what this God had to say that I can therefore align my life with. So self-control, mashal, the ability to control and have dominion and exercise reign over that which is trying to call, control you, this is a foundational principle and it's a superpower. And so for those of you who already have it, maybe in one area, but not others, the good news is you have the power and you can execute it in all areas of your life. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, I wrote a book, <laughs> it's part, part of that's in here. I have lots of videos on my website, uh, CassandraVataka.com. There's lots of resources to help you. But I wanted to come to you today and speak to you about this superpower that you have. You have it, you have it, you have it. Ideally, you've exercised it in one area of your life, so you have one example that you can say, okay, if I can exercise it in this area, that means I can apply it to other areas. And so I want to encourage you to tap into your superpower of self-control. And if you are indeed a child of the God of Most High, Yeshua HaMashiach, you have an even greater ability to tap into it a whole heck of a lot quicker. And so I encourage you to do so. Shalom.